Hello, uh, we're going to set up our home security lab. I think for students learn, trying to learn about security and networking, uh, it's good to have a, a lab that you can uh, use to find out about different operating systems and whatnot, different tools. The best one, I think, is a virtual one. You don't have to go online. You don't need internet access. You can get a whole uh, you know, network with a lot of devices going. And you, without even having internet access, just you know, on your local machine. Uh, a lot of times, students will take a class and they'll love the hands-on uh, labs and things. But after a period of time, when they finally have time, they're not taking the class to go back and learn. They don't have access. So uh, we're going to install Kali Linux into uh, VMware Player, and both of these uh, programs are free, so this doesn't cost anything, which is a, another great advantage. So first, uh, I just want to point you to where you can download uh, VMware Player. You can uh, search SUSE this out by searching download uh, VMware Player. I'll put this link below the recording uh, if I get a chance. So I assume you know how to you know download that, install it, and then what we need to do is we need to go over and install uh, Kali Linux. So here's the Kali site, and you can download a 64-bit or a 32-bit. Now you need to know you need to get the right one. If you have a 32-bit computer, don't download the 64-bit. You could probably be okay downloading if you have a 64-bit download a 32-bit. But a lot of times students don't know. And how do you find that out? Well, you click the Windows uh, button and then select, then right-click computer, and then select properties. It should be right here, and like it'll say on this properties page, uh, system type under, you know. It's not Windows Edition we're looking at. It's under System, and then System Type. It's mine says 64-bit operating system. So you can tell. So download the right one, and this will take a while. I think it's like uh, you know three or four gigs, something like that. And uh, when you get that downloaded, it should look like this. Go over to mine. should have my uh, virtual machines right here. We should have Kali Linux right there. There it is. So this ISO, yeah, it's uh, a little over three gigs, so it's going to take a while to download that. But remember where you downloaded it from, this path up here, because you're going to need that path. And I put it in, you know, in my documents, my virtual machines. My computer's set up uh, with the logical partition uh, putting the system directory on the C drive and all my data files on the D drive. And uh, the advantage of that is if you get a virus or something like that, it might wipe out your system partition, but your data will still be uh, sitting there clean as a whistle. So, and, and so when you recover, you, don't, you just have to recover the system partition, not all the data as well. Uh, but assume you have everything on the C drive, put it in my documents, my virtual machines. So download that. Now that's going to take a while. Remember, we're getting this from this website here. What are these numbers? Well, you can run it. When you download this file, you can run it against the uh, cryptographic hash, and this should match. Uh, what is what does that prove? Well, the file hasn't been tampered with, or if it has been tampered with, uh, somebody got both accounts, the, the hosting of the ISO, and then the other one that has the uh, uh, the hashes. So they must that it's harder to get access to two web servers in one. So because <clears throat> a lot of times people say, well, why don't they just hash the the Trojan version and then put that hash up there? Well. Usually it's hosted on a diff different web server. Makes it a little harder. <coughs> so, 
you've downloaded and installed uh, VMware Player, which looks like this. You've downloaded and installed that ISO image of Kali Linux. So now we're ready to uh, create a new virtual machine. So let's go there. Now remember I told you we were going to need that file path and we need it right here. Now if you don't remember it but can find it, just hit browse and it'll uh, take you where you can navigate through your file system you know and select it so you could just uh, leave these default or you know I'm going to call this Kali Linux I'm going to call it Kali Linux 2 because I already have a virtual machine called Kali Linux okay select disk capacity uh, for this installation I'd select 30 because uh, it's gonna you know as you experiment with these tools and stuff it's gonna uh, eventually take up some space <coughs> and then you need uh, plenty of room for updates and things like that so we're gonna store virtual disk as a single file and click next now we're gonna hit customized hardware Okay, now, the reason is, is we don't want this Kali Linux uh, being a, a client on a host, but have it act like it's behind a NAT server, because that means that uh, it's going to be hard for me to ping out anyone else on my LAN, and it's going to be hard for those uh, devices to come in and see me, too. So, we want to bridge, as a result, we want to bridge the uh, real... Uh, network adapters, so we want to uh, configure bridge settings. So, um, your options here are uh, network adapter. But by default, I think it's LAN or NAT. I'm sorry, and uh, but we want it uh, bridged. And then we'll configure. If you have other virtual uh, machines, you don't necessarily want that. You want it to go through the. Um, you want it to go through the default gateway anyway before it gets to you. So you can, like I unclicked it. This because uh, I have a virtual PC. This this virtual adapter, but I left the two physical adapters in, so I can use this machine wirelessly or when I'm plugged in with this Realtek Gigabit controller. Uh, so make sure you select bridged. Uh, memory, you're going to want to increase that. Uh, don't ever increase it to more than half your physical memory. How do you know how much memory you have? Well, again, go my computer uh, properties it should tell you uh, yeah installed memory right there it is so you don't want to go more than half now I could have gone up to four on this but because I got eight but I'll go two and then processors if you unless you're on a really you know fire breathing gaming machine with multiple processor just leave that as one uh, let's see if it got this this before we just go out of here let's check this real quick uh, two bridged yeah that looks good so we could go close finish And there it goes. Now we're going to select uh, this top one and hit enter. We're going to leave this uh, one down here below. Uh, we're not going to mess with this this menu down at the bottom. You can if you want close it. So you just for at this point you're just going to hit enter a bunch of times. I'm trying to think. I made some notes here. Let me see if, we, if there's anything you have to be aware of on this uh, install. Now you just have to, you know, set your uh, 
time and where you are and uh, you're going to have to be supplied for a host name uh, you want to uh, use the entire disk uh, with the disk loader and then confirm that and uh, you don't uh, okay the disks to be formatted because they are virtual disks so it won't hurt your real disk uh, you don't have a mirrored server which you might in an organization if you use it for updates and whatnot oh, okay the only other thing I want to bring to your attention is you need to <clears throat> you need to um, make sure that you in install the the grub loader but everything else in, in that those menus should be pretty straightforward <clears throat> okay so now I think I'm gonna before I forget get rid of this because I don't think it's going to use that much resources but just to be sure you never know about virtualization that's um, the reason I don't have uh, Kali installed on this is because I had to uh, upgrade my system to 64-bit uh, because before I, uh, I did the upgrades I only had 4 gigabits of RAM and it's hard to virtualize with that much so I figured out my motherboard allowed up to 8 so I put uh, 64 so I could use that full 8. Now how much could I possibly get if my motherboard support it, well, 64-bit Windows supports over a terabyte, uh, but usually the limiting factor isn't the software; it's the it's the uh, hardware, which in this case, uh, the motherboard usually only supports a certain amount of RAM. You need to check that. Uh, so, anything else we need to do, or is, are we good to go? Let's see here. This is, uh, you know, it's going to take a while for it to boot up. This is on restart. It should go a little quicker, but it's taking longer than I thought. But um, once once you get it uh, up and going, it'll uh, you'll be prompted to make a password, you know, make it something you'll remember, obviously. Uh, Oh, what happened? It disappeared. There it goes. I don't know what happened. I was trying to get it into my... Uh, into my screen that I'm using to screenshot and shoot this. Yeah, it's not... want to do that. Anyway, I was going to say, uh, it's probably a good idea to... Um, install um, VM, VMware tools and the reason is what I noticed without it before I got it installed is you'd have to hit uh, control alt to uh, free up your mouse to go over to other uh, applications that you had open or to use it on your regular computer uh, also uh, when you don't have VMware tools you have to click and make sure what you want to select is selected this uh, 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 VMware tools also allows you to maximize the screen. You, I know you can't see this because uh, you're on a. Uh, I'm recording. I'm doing a screencast, so you, you can't see my full screen. Uh, so get it installed. You get your get it all set up, and then uh, install VMware tools. Will make things a little bit easier for you. And uh, then we're going to start from here. We're going to. Uh, learn a little bit about Wireshark, ZenMap, Nessus, and of course Metasploit, which is excellent in, uh, in Kali Linux.
Thanks for watching.